you stand and sing with us? Join us as we lift our voices. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my soul. Well, good morning. Welcome to Campbellsville Baptist. My name is Justin McDonald, the activities pastor here. Uh, we're glad you are worshiping with us this morning on this September 11th. And uh, as the service goes on, we're going to remember um, what that day was. And for many of you, we wanna, we're going to pray for our nation and our world and everything that happened um, on September 11, 2001. We're going to remember that and pray this morning. But also, uh, we wanna, we're want we glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, there's a connection card in your bulletin. Please fill that out as the ushers pass the offering plate toward the end of the service. Uh, you can drop that in there or give it to a pastor as uh, you exit the service today. We want to connect with you and learn more about you and see where you can get plugged into ministry here at Campbellsville Baptist. Also, in September, it's uh, Eliza Broadus offering. You have information about that in your bulletin as well. It's our chance to give back uh, to state missions here here in Kentucky that goes to help people in our state hear the gospel and do that. Uh, we want to partner with you and do that. So if you feel led to give, there's an envelope in there also, and you can ask more of us about that at the end of the service or throughout um, the month of September. This time, let's greet one another and we'll continue worshiping.
Amen. As we come back together, we live in such a um, we live in such a how-to society. You can go in Barnes and Nobles or any bookstore, and there are racks upon racks upon racks of of how to straighten your life out, how to build things. How you can find a how-to book on anything, but it seems like our society just can't get a hold of how do we live a holy lifestyle that's honoring and pleasing to God? And we have this, this how-to book that is right here that's the number one seller in the world. I mean, it's still at the top of the charts of, of books that are, are purchased, but sometimes we just don't seem to get what it says. Christ is our example. He came and he lived that perfect holy life, being obedient to the Father. And it's because the Father is holy. So if you follow God, he says, be holy for I am holy. The old hymn writer joined in the songs of the angels that we find in Isaiah, that we find in Revelation that we get the chance as the church of God to gather around his throne and to sing with them, holy, holy, holy. Would you sing with me, please?
As we remain standing, let's enter into a time of prayer together. Would you join me? Oh God, as we have sung these words to you today, once again affirming that it's all about you. Everything that we're doing this morning is all about you. Everything in this church, it's all about you. Father, hear our confession. Hear us as we are honest about those times when it hasn't been about you, when it has been more about us, more about our name, more about our reputation, more about what we prefer. God, hear our prayer, hear our confession, because you have brought us into glory this morning. You brought us into your presence. And once again, as we join our voices around the throne, and as we visualize those 24 elders, as we visualize the angels, the seraphim, all gathered around singing you praise, lifting you up as holy, 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 right there in the middle is the Lamb the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, standing there, slain. How can a lamb stand who was slain? How can we offer living sacrifices? Father, with you it works. With you it happens. And so, yes, God, hear our praise, hear our glories today for the lamb who was slain. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that he has been given for our sins. He willingly went to the cross for us. He endured the shame. He endured the scorn. He even endured saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He did it all for us. What love. What love is there? Father, it's love that we can't possibly fathom. But even as we begin to grasp more and more of it, it only results in more of our praise being given up to you. So, Father, we thank you today for Jesus, for the cross, for the empty tomb, as we are gathered here before you. And as we are mindful of the depth of the love of Jesus, Lord, we take our entire world today and we place it before you. On this particular date, September the 11th, Lord, those of us who were here to remember the events of 15 years ago, we continue to place our world before you. God, we are grateful for your protection. We're grateful for the ways that you have kept us safe in so many ways, even safe to be in your house this morning. But God, this world still needs you desperately. Father, those who have an agenda fueled by hate need your grace. They need your life-changing love, even as we continue to need that grace every single day. Oh, God, we've got missionaries on the front lines who are sharing Jesus. Lord, we pray for them today. And even as we come in contact with our neighbors, our friends, may we also know that we are missionaries. We are ambassadors. We are emissaries of the life-changing love of Jesus. It's the only hope of our world. It's what our church is based on. So, Lord, may we not lose hope may we not lose courage even as we have been in your presence today may that empower us to continue to be your people aliens and strangers in this world as your word has told us and even as the world hated jesus lord there are times when the world will hate us so god we need our hearts we need our lives even more fully and deeply linked to you, intertwined with you, forever connected to you through love. And so, God, thank you again that we can be in worship today, and we pray that the entire world would come to know you to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. But as you're seated, let's continue to lift our voices, please as we come to the presence of the Lord. Sing with us.
hear your word, that when we leave this place, we will be at the foot of the cross, and Lord, that it will change the way we live, and it's in the name of Christ, who is holy, who gave everything for us, his name, amen. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to be looking this morning at Matthew chapter 18, verses 5 through 9. Matthew 18, verses 5 through 9. And as you are finding the passage this morning, just want to talk to you about a couple of things uh, having to do with, with, with our church in these days. Uh, first of all, just remember that for the past couple of weeks, simply been giving you a reminder and, a, and an encouragement uh, to be faithful in your giving and stewardship for the local church ministry that happens here through Campbellsville Baptist Church. Typically during the summer, uh, we do take a break from regular schedule of things, regular commitment on things. During the fall, things begin to come back together again, uh, but that also includes our giving. So you'll notice in the pews in front of you, there are some just general offering envelopes. Please make use of that if the Lord is leading you today to perhaps get caught up on your giving or maybe even to make a fresh commitment to sharing the gospel through what happens here at Campbellsville Baptist Church. Our Budget Finance Committee is beginning its work to prepare the budget for 2017. They will be encouraged to give us a challenging budget for ministry to the extent that you and I are faithful supporting the budget in these days. 
And speaking of, of, uh, of those types of things, uh, you want to make plans to be here tonight at 6 o'clock. We're, we're going to be having our regularly scheduled September monthly business meeting, but we're just having the business meeting at 6. Normally we would have worship service first, but we want to encourage everyone to be here at 6. We've got two very important committees, our House and Grounds Committee and our Budget and Finance Committee, going to be sharing some important recommendations to the church, uh, important steps to take regarding the future of our church. And one of the things I love about being a Baptist is important decisions like this are not made by just one person or a small group of people. This is a time for the entire church to come together, to pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance, and to make the decisions together. So come tonight at 6 o'clock, hear these recommendations, be in prayer, and then decide as the Holy Spirit leads you. And as we think about prayer and as we think about our community, I want to encourage you next Sunday night, September the 18th, to be involved in a community prayer rally that's being sponsored by the Taylor County Baptist Association. Details about this are in your bulletin today. But basically, next Sunday night, we're going to gather together outside at the courthouse area that's right next to the Taylor County Courthouse. Across from CVS, there's, a, there's a, 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 a mur a, an historical mural there, the, a very good, nice outdoor gathering area. That's where we'll, we, we will be Sunday night, September the 18th, to simply pray, to pray for our community, pray for our county, pray for our city, pray for our world. Unprecedented challenges and decisions are before our community in these days. As God God's people, we pray for the blessing of our community, and we're going to have a chance to do that next Sunday night, September the 18th. And then also, as we think about our community, we want to give God praise for how he is adding to our church. Chrissy Oldham uh, came forward a few weeks ago, and she is coming to join our church by transfer of letter. So if you see Chrissy, uh, please uh, uh, let her know that you're glad that she is coming and that she uh, is led of the Lord to join our, our fellowship here. Chrissy Oldham coming by transfer of letter. All right, it's all about kingdom community, life in kingdom community. Matthew chapter 18, verses 5 through 9. Some of these verses may be familiar to you already, but I want you to see them in a fresh way, particularly in what Jesus says about living together in relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please stand in honor of God's word. Follow along as I read Matthew 18, verses 5 through 9. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes." And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. You may be seated. Just remember what we've been doing in, in Matthew 18. We've been talking about life in kingdom community, and it's a reminder that as Campbellsville Baptist Church, of all the things that we are, first and foremost, we are a kingdom community. And together, in these relationships, we are living out God's ideal for his people. And as you and I show grace to each other, as you and I encourage each other in our walk with the Lord, and as you and I share the gospel with our neighbors, our friends, and even with the world around us, and as God changes hearts, as he changes lives through what we do, what is that? That's a foretaste of God's kingdom coming in all of its glory. So, so we read in the Bible about God's kingdom to come, and one day God will return. One day Jesus will come and bring a new heaven and a new earth. But until that day, you and I are a part of that kingdom. 
We get a foretaste of it. We get our appetites whetted for the, for the eventual coming of his kingdom. And as you and I are blessed in the Lord, as you and I are blessed in our relationships, as you and I bless and encourage each other, what is happening? God is saying, this is what I have always wanted for my people, to be in community with each other and in community with the Lord. Life in kingdom community. So that's what Jesus is talking about here in Matthew 18. But we have to be sure to let Jesus set the boundaries. Jesus is the one who sets the parameters for this kingdom community. Because it goes far deeper than than biological or or family connection. It goes far deeper than than geography or, or living in the same town or the same county. And as much as we are so grateful for the presence of our church in Campbellsville and in Taylor County, kingdom community goes even deeper and farther and lasts longer even than that. It is a marvelous, amazing thing that you and I get to be a part of. But Jesus sets the boundaries. And remember, there are two things that Jesus has said you and I bring to kingdom community. Now, let me be careful how I say this, because this is not a community where we pay dues, you know. We don't pay dues. We don't, we don't bring that first and maybe someone approves it later. It doesn't work that way. But make no mistake, Jesus says if you're going to be a part of kingdom community, there are two things that you have to bring to it. And as I said at the 9 o'clock service, I want to say this again to you guys at 11. If we are not experiencing kingdom community, or if anyone here this morning is saying, you know what, I'm not sure if I'm sensing or experiencing the things that Pastor Mike has been talking about, the first thing you need to ask is, Lord, what about me? Am I bringing what you require? Because God has always said this. He said, what what does God require of you? What does God require that you bring into community? Are we bringing what God requires? And the two things that Jesus emphasizes here in Matthew 18, and he could not be any clearer about it, two things are needed, humility and forgiveness. Now, I'm not saying that humility and forgiveness are easy things to bring into relationships. They can be very hard, very difficult, and to be honest, that's why so often any one of us might choose to go a different way as opposed to truly being humble and forgiving in our relationships. It can be hard to do, but Jesus is very clear, and make no mistake, He gives us the power of his spirit to do it. And even deeper than that, Jesus himself has set us the model and the example. The one who began our community, Jesus himself, was humble enough to go all the way to the cross to give his life for our sins. The one who began this community was so full of grace and forgiveness in his own heart that he could say, Father, forgive them because they really don't know what they're doing. So if God is challenging you today to be humble and forgiving in your kingdom relationships, take heart, be encouraged, and let Jesus help you today. We've been focusing, first of all, on humility. Remember what we mean by humility, and this is so important to bring into kingdom community. Just real quick, humility, first of all, is having that low view of our own importance. We've got to bring that attitude into our kingdom relationships. We have to truly have the attitude that says that other people are more important than me. We have to bring that. That has to be our attitude. That's got to be the state of our heart. But then we also saw this a few weeks ago. Humility also is never, ever looking down on others. Because the moment we begin to think that we are somehow better than another brother or sister in Christ, what has happened? We've allowed spiritual pride to come into this community. And God says pride has no place in kingdom community. That's why the emphasis is on humility. But now notice what Jesus says in this part. Matthew 18, 5 through 9. Because here, Jesus talks about sin, and he talks about sin in some unforgettable, even provocative ways. Because here, it's when Jesus talks about sin, he says, look, to deal with sin, you know, cut off your your hands, your feet, gouge out your eyes. This is teaching of Jesus that sticks in our memory. And we'll talk more about what Jesus means here in just a moment. But yeah, Jesus is talking about sin, but here's the challenge for you and I. Our temptation 
is to think about sin as being, you know, th that's just my issue. That's what I have going on in my life with the Lord. It's just me and the Lord. It, it's something that I deal with. It's something that I struggle with, but it's just me and him. We've got to work it out, and we will work it out. So sin is a deeply personal matter, no question about it. But get the setting here. Because even as Jesus is talking about sin in Matthew 18, he's saying, look, remember your relationships. Remember the life that you're doing together. Remember that together you're walking before the Lord. You're doing this whole thing together with each other. So that whenever you or I struggle with sin, or even those times, and it seems like inevitably, when we are going to stumble, when we are, when we will give in to a temptation, so that sin does begin to have a place in our lives, even as, even as, as Christians, even when that happens. Jesus says, listen, it's not just the effect that it has on you, but it's the effect that it has on others. Marriages, families, communities, cities, and yes, the church, the kingdom community right here, when you and I give in to sin, the effects go a whole lot farther than just my life or your life. It affects our relationships as well. And this is what Jesus wants to make sure that we understand. So take a look what he says. He says, listen, if we're going to be humble, if we're going to bring humility into our kingdom relationships, we have to be honest about sin, honest about what it means in our lives. And yes, we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, but we still deal with the flesh. We still live in a world full of, of, of brokenness and, and sinful temptation. And at times, we will stumble. It's going to happen. We've got to be honest about that. But even to take it this way, humility is being honest about how our sin affects others. We've got to go there, all right? We've got to go there and understand that when we give in, the effect happens to other lives as well. Notice what Jesus says here. He says, listen, you're not doing this by yourself. Again, look at Matthew 18, verse, verses 5 and following. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to, to sin or to stumble, it will be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Realize what Jesus is saying. Listen, when we come into the kingdom, we are to come as little ones. We are to come as little children. The words that Jesus says here apply, yes, to little children in the kingdom, but they also apply to all disciples, all believers. Because Jesus says when we come into the kingdom, we are to come as little children. That dependent upon God, that trusting in God, and that much in need of other people to help us. So all of us are little ones. I am a little one. You are a little one. So when you think of yourself as a needy, dependent child upon your heavenly Father, that helps you be humble. But when you also realize that everybody else in church with you today is also a needy, dependent child who just needs a desperate, desperately needs a heavenly Father, you see how that changes how we relate to each other. I think of it in this way. Imagine um, a family traveling in the car, parents up front, kids in the back, and let's say that, that, that the car has a flat tire. So the, the dad steers the car off into, into the side lane of the road because it's got a flat tire. He stops the car, turns off the key, and then he turns to the back seat, and he specifically says to a three-year-old child in the family, three-year-old, there's a flat you go fix it, and we'll wait. Can you imagine? What, what parent would do that? What self-respecting parent would do that? What, what mentally stable parent would ever do such a thing? Three-year-old, go fix the flat, we'll wait. That would never happen. So I want you to understand that in the body of Christ, when one of us is struggling, when one of us is having a hard, difficult time, one option we've got is, well, they'll just have to go figure that out on their own. Pull themselves up. They'll figure it out, and when they figure it out, they'll, they'll be back. It doesn't work that way. All of us are the little ones. 
And instead, if we would never say to a three-year-old, go change the tire, so we should never ever say to a brother or sister in Christ, or even have the attitude, go work out your stuff and then come back. No. We go with them. We come alongside. We pray, we encourage, we give, and we do all that we can to help them because we're in this together. Humility is being honest about how our sin affects others. So, so what does Jesus say here? He says, listen, if something happens in your life to where you stumble, but if in your stumbling you cause someone else to stumble, understand what Jesus says about that. He says, listen, there is an effect to that because indeed, not only are we responsible for our own walk with the Lord, but we are also responsible for the effect that our walk has on the walks of others. And if any of us think, well, you know, that's too heavy a load to bear. I have a hard enough time keeping up with my own walk. But listen, this is what Jesus is saying. We all are needy children in need of the Father. So what could happen? If something happens in our lives, let's say we we give in, let's say we stumble, let's say we engage in, in, in a sinful behavior or even a sinful attitude, and look at what Jesus says in verse 6. If it causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, if it causes someone else to stumble because of what is happening in our lives, Jesus says, it'd be better to have a millstone fastened around the neck and drowned in the open sea. Now look, this is vivid talk here. I I take the Bible seriously like you do. Jesus really said these words, but what do they mean? Listen, Jesus is describing one of the most terrible things that could ever happen to a person. A A millstone what was the largest carved rock that the people in Jesus' day could imagine. And and it would have have weighed at least 2,000 pounds, and it was so heavy and so big that it would take a mule or or, or an ox to, to turn that millstone so that it would grind the wheat under it. It was so heavy that a person couldn't turn it. A person couldn't move it. So Jesus says, imagine being tied around the neck to one of those and being dropped in the open sea, the deepest part of the sea. Imagine that. An unspeakable fate, a terrible fate. We don't even want to imagine what that would be like to experience that. Jesus says, think about your brother. Think about your sister. You help them. You encourage them. You do what you can to come alongside them. And you don't stop offering help to them. Because if within your attitude or your actions, if they stumble, what would be the result in your life? We have to accept that responsibility. And we have to believe what Jesus says. We have to believe the consequences that would happen in our lives. And folks, I'm just thinking, if ever you and I get the sense, you know, as I'm trying to walk before the Lord, I just feel like I'm being drugged down. I feel like, feel like circumstances or life is about to drag me under. If we ever feel that way in the Lord, the first thing that you and I are to do is say, Lord, what's happened? Have I been the cause of someone else to stumble? Have I been the cause of of, of struggle or sin even in the life of another brother or sister in Christ? Lord, has that happened? And if it has, we're honest about it. We confess it. We get right with the Lord, and we even go to that brother or sister in Christ, and we say, I am sorry because of what I have done, my sinful attitude, my sinful actions have caused you to struggle, have caused you to go through hardship, and I apologize for that, and I need your forgiveness. If you could never think of possibly doing that, what's happening? That's pride. Humility is willing to go and do and say what's needed for there to be reconciliation and peace with the Lord. We accept the responsibility. We believe in the judgment that Jesus has been talking about, and we are willing to make radical change. Willing to make radical change. Now, you heard the words that I read just a moment ago in in Matthew 18, beginning at about, well, well, again, look at verse 7. Jesus says, Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. Because sometimes, even in the exercise of our own Christian freedom and liberty, we can cause someone else to stumble. 
We say, well, I, I'm free to do this. It's okay for me to do this. Whether it is drinking alcohol or playing the lottery or going to, to movies that have objectionable content, we say, well, there's nothing wrong with this. I can do this. I can handle this. I am mature enough. I know the Lord. I know what his word says. I can do this. Well, apart from arguing whether that is even correct or not, listen, sometimes in the exercise of our own freedom in Christ, someone else whom we are in relationship with, a brother or sister in Christ, they can't handle that. So they can be caused to stumble simply because you and I are using our freedom in Christ? Paul talks about this in Galatians. He says, listen, be free in Christ, but do not let your liberty be the cause of someone else to stumble. He says in, in Corinthians, he says in Romans, he says, look, if it's a question of eating meat or drinking wine, Paul says, you know what? We may feel like we're free to do it, but if it's going to cause someone else to stumble, Paul says, look, I will voluntarily restrict what I do. I'll, I'll turn away from it. I'll say no to it for the sake of someone else for the love and the care and the protection I have for another little one, another child in the faith who needs God, who need God's protection and needs support from a friend. Are we willing to make those drastic changes? Now, Paul talks about it in Romans and Corinthians in a certain way. Jesus talks about it in an unforgettable way. Again, look at verse eight. If your hand causes you if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. Jesus is speaking for effect here. We are not to take Jesus literally here. Because if we did, you and I would be walking around with one hand and eyes gouged out. Believe me, we would. I know I would. Jesus is speaking for effect so that we don't lose his point. He's simply saying, be willing to make radical change, radical sacrifice in your life for the sake of your walk, for the sake of your witness, and for the sake of your brothers and sisters in Christ. And the fact is we have to ask ourselves, am I willing to do this? Am I willing to do something that otherwise I would not do for the sake of the love and the care that I have for a brother or sister in Christ? Am I willing to do that? And that's the question to ask. Am I willing to forgo drinking? Am I willing to forgo playing the lottery? Am I willing to forgo doing the things that, that, you know, to me, quite frankly, I guess would be okay? I don't want to be legalistic or pharisaical about it. I guess it's okay. But now, wait a minute. What about that problem? What about the person with the gambling addiction? What about that person with the alcohol addiction? What will be the effect in their life with me exercising my Christian freedom? Am I willing to say no to myself for the sake of someone else? If you think this is a hard teaching of Jesus, you're exactly right. But Jesus never asks you to do something that he hasn't already done himself. Think of the things that Jesus said no to. Think of the privilege, think of the freedoms that Jesus voluntarily relinquished because of his love for you and for me. Yes, it's hard, but it's nothing Jesus hasn't already done for you and for me, and we are to model that for others. You know, it is about life and having life together. Jesus says, listen, I want you to enter life. Even if you have to enter life having sacrificed or given something up, it is so much better to be in life, in the blessed eternal life of the Lord together. And as I said a moment ago, even experiencing now the everlasting life of the Lord. But yes, we're going to stumble. Yes, we're going to struggle. And yes, others will be injured because of the things that we do. But instead of thinking that's the end of the story, with Jesus, with grace, there is always the next chapter. During the Olympics in Brazil, there was a, 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 a literal playing out of this. There were two runners involved in a race. One of them stumbled, and then a second runner was injured because the first runner stumbled. 
Track and field star Abby D'Agostino was running in the 2016 Summer Olympics during the second semifinal heat of the women's 5,000 meter race. The 24 year old runner was doing her best to not only finish the race but to win. However, another runner, New Zealand's Nikki Hamlin, took a tumble on the inside track. It was impossible to avoid the fallen runner, so Abby D'Agostino tripped over Hamlin, and when she stumbled to the ground, she injured herself. But what did they do? When D'Agostino got up, realizing she had been injured, the first thing she did was to check on Nikki Hamlin to make sure she was okay. And then together, Nikki and Abby finished the race. Stumbling, injured, fallen, but finishing the race with tears and love and with the embrace. We've got the clip that I want to show you. Take a look. It can happen in a race. Listen, it can happen in your life and my life. So if there has been a time in your life when you have stumbled, when you've given in to a sinful temptation and now you realize the effect that it has not just on your walk with the Lord but in the lives of others, what do you do? Jesus forgives you. By his grace, let him lift you up. Let him build you back up. Go to that brother or sister. Embrace them in the Lord and together finish the race. Father, we thank you this morning for Jesus for the grace that we have in him. And God, also today, we want to take Jesus at his word because when he talks to us with such vivid, honest language about the effects of our actions on others, Lord, that's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call for every one of us. And Father, we all come before you to be honest about the sin in our lives, honest about sinful attitudes, about actions that still are contrary to your word and to the blessed life you have for us, but also to realize that the effect that our sins have had upon our marriages, our families, our community, and yes, God, even our church. When we all realize once again the truth of your words, O oh Lord, that every single one of us are needy little ones who have to have their heavenly Father. We must have, Lord, your love, your watch, your gaze, your protection. When all of us realize that about ourselves and about every single person today who's in church with us, Father, there's no question it changes everything. So with your grace, with your help, with the heart change that only you can bring, God, may we bring to this community humility. Yes, God, we confess our sins. We confess to you our pride and our resistance to go to a brother or sister and to ask for their forgiveness. We confess that to you, O oh God. And with your help, with your lordship, with your grace, this can be the community that you want it to be. Father, may it not be what we want. May this be the community that you want. Runners together, finishing the race, finishing the race, and running into the arms of our Savior. And it's in his name and for his sake that we pray. Amen. We now come to a time of decision. And if the Holy Spirit has been speaking into your heart, if you would come to him today, confessing your sins, confessing your need for the Savior, would you come? Along with the Lord Jesus Christ, we will embrace you. We will encourage you. Perhaps there's someone here today looking for a community, looking for a church home. Come and be a part of all that is happening here at Campbellsville Baptist Church. We want to be kingdom community here. And for others, there simply may be something that's very strong and, and heavy upon your heart, simply something that you want to pray about today before the day goes any further. Would you come? We'll be here to receive you. We'll be here to counsel with you as we stand together and sing.
praise. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you, Lord, for just a wonderful time that we've had this morning, Lord, just being able to uplift you, worship you, Lord, allowing us to understand that if we didn't already know that, um, Lord, our sin affects anything and everyone around us. And Lord, I just pray that, uh, Lord, the message was, was delivered very well and, and it falls on fertile soil. And Lord, just be with us as we go throughout the remainder of the day. Lord, I pray that you just take this offering and I pray that you just bless uh, our church, Taylor County, uh, with the funds that are collected today. In your name we pray, amen. I do not wear my sin or shame. They have all been washed away. Gone are the stains of yesterday. I am held in perfect peace. Your covenant is keeping me. You've been all you said you'd be. Gone are the doubts that I believed.
Well, God's given us a great day in his house this morning. Uh, as you prepare to leave, just a couple of things to make sure you know about. Don't forget that in two weeks, we will be celebrating our 225th anniversary as a church here in Campbellsville, Taylor County. On that day, September 25th, we'll have one worship service at 11 and then our meal to follow in the gym. So on September the 25th, Sunday school at 10, one worship service at 11. It's going to be a great day, lots of excitement building, lots of guests and friends here that day, so you don't want to miss it, uh, coming up just in two weeks. Uh, also, remember the uh, very important vote coming up in the city of Campbellsville uh, regarding uh, lifting the current limits on alcohol sales. We do have more yard signs available today if you would like to have one, and you'll find the yard signs at these exits and also out this way by the elevator and also downstairs at the covered drive exit as well. Let's continue to pray for God to be with with our community and help us as God's people to always be about what will bless our friends and neighbors. Very important decision coming up regarding that alcohol vote. And then finally, uh, Justin McDonald is at the back of the worship center this morning. Uh, See you, student, and if you were not here at 10 o'clock for our special welcome breakfast, but you'd like more information about our college ministries, Justin is here for you, so come and see Justin at the end of the service today. All right, let's stand together as uh, we close our service this morning, and we'll have our benediction prayer by Jeremy Litton. But let's remember that as we leave for this week, we want to be God's people sharing God's love because it's God's love that changes the world. All right, let's pray. Uh, Lord, Dad, we love you. We thank you for this time we have to come together and to worship and to fellowship together, Lord. I also pray that you'll help us leave today uh, charged and just impassioned, Lord, to to put others above ourselves and so that we can live out your words, Lord, and to, and to be light into this world and just help us to, to love each other and to be there for each other uh, when we stumble, Lord. We love you and we thank you for all that you've done. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.